So for this tutorial we're going to be looking at some zoom lenses with animated distortion. Some things we're going to look out for is jitters in your zoom curve, jitters in your camera path that might be introduced from the zoom lens, and also applying animated distortion and uh, how to export it. So with that being said, let's get into it. I'm going to go ahead and start tracking this plate, and I'll see you in a moment. Alright, so now that my points are tracked, let's get into solving. So just a disclaimer, this tutorial might be a little bit all over the place. I've tried to teach this and explain things as best as I, as I can, but this is kind of a very weird topic that is hard to understand unless you've dealt with it in your shots and you've seen the problems happen to you. But hopefully you can refer back to this tutorial down the line when the stuff happens and you realize, oh crap, that weird guy in the video said this thing and now it's a thing for me. Okay, with that being said, let's get into this. Jumping over to the Solver tab. So right away, I'm going to hit F2, I just want to frame this up. So right away, uh, with a zoom lens, we need uh, zooming unknown, we need calculate distortion, and we're also going to need zooming distortion. But let me just do these things one at a time so you can see why. So I'm going to hit go. And now that I've hit go, let's just switch to refine so that we can keep building off of what we have, even though this is kind of bad. But uh, you can see all the points are sliding around and doing crazy, crazy things. If you want a better visualization of how much slide each of these solve points have, right click, view, show tracker, radar. It's just a way to show you uh, uh, in a little bit more of a noticeable manner, I guess. I could have worded that much cooler. Oh well, whatever. So yeah, you can view with tracker radars, and this is generally recommended to use all the time. Radars are great. So, we solved, we have an error of 9. That's pretty bad. Uh, why? Because we don't have zooming on. So let's turn on zooming. So when I hit go, now we have an animated focal length. And the points stick a whole lot better. But there's still some problems going on with some of these. And that is because we don't have any distortion solved. And you can look at you can look in the shot and you can see the warp in things right now. Right here too. So I'm going to turn on calc distortion. And hit go. And it's a little bit better, but only like 0.1 right here. So we're down to 1. Great. And how do we improve it further? We go into more over here. And we come over and turn on zooming distortion. Shift G. And now our solve error is down to 0.8. Even better. And it's I can't really get it any lower on mine because I have rolling shutter on my camera and it's pretty aggressive too. So don't worry about my error not my error not dropping any lower than it is. Okay, so those are the main things. If I hit F3, I just want to quickly point out that although we have animated distortion, we don't see this thing moving. Why? I don't know if it's just my version of Synthize because I'm running an older version or if it's fixed in newer copies, but it won't display properly unless you come over to Lens Workflow, apply your distortion, and now once it caches we'll be able to watch and see uh, the plate warping into this black space. Yeah, you see that? Animated distortion, son. Or daughter. Whatever. Whoever's watching this. Uh, yes, so now we have the animation, but I have to remove this because there are things that we have to check. We aren't done now, and I, if you really want to, if you're comfortable with the amount of points you have and the solve that you've gotten, you could apply this and then work with your shot and model it and do whatever you need in Synthize, and it, it'll work, it'll be easy because you can see things. But I have to turn this off for my checks, so I'm going to undo earlier run. And now we can start calculating distortion again. The reason I got to do that is because sometimes your distortion can, uh, can be wrong and it can affect your camera path as well. If I hit F7 and come over to cameras, camera 1, let's look at solved path and let's actually just look at field of view first. So now that I'm looking at field of view, you'd kind of expect to see no zooming at the start, let's just frame this a little bit better, 
you'd kind of expect to see no zooming at the start and no zooming at the end, but you could see there is clearly animation. These should be flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to pick the frame where I think that I stopped zooming, somewhere around here, at the end, and at the beginning I'll find that frame, somewhere around here. And then I'm going to fill in that space with some keys. There we go. So if you wanted, you can smooth this path using filtering control. Oh, the windows are doing the overtop thingy. Can't remember how to turn that off, if you can. Uh, so you could use filtering control, field of view, and you can apply your smooth and hey, but we've eroded it a lot now. That's pretty bad. You could turn your frequency much, much higher so that you only get rid of fine bumps, but it's still pretty risky. Filtering can be pretty scary, and I don't like doing it on zoom curves uh, specifically. So I'm going to reset this, and I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to leave some of these imperfections because I did this by hand. I know there's a little bit of that jitter in this curve. Some lenses on like proper productions are pretty smooth and motorized and you could get away with the normal smooth of the filter. But in this case, I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it as it is. So the reason that I flattened this out is the path here. Uh, if your lens has a zoom where it shouldn't, it might affect where your camera sits because how it interacts with your points. So your camera path will have a different motion than it actually should. Now that I've locked this, the camera path will update. Um, if I solve right now, the whole, the whole camera solve is going to move away and the path is going to change drastically. So just for the sake of showing you the difference in the path, I'm going to lock a couple I'm going to lock a couple points into place just so that you can just so I can undo and redo and show you what's happening. Okay, so I've grabbed a few. I'm going to go trackers, set seed and lock. There we go. And let's go back to solver and we're going to go into axis locks and we're going to turn on field of view and we're going to get so we're getting that anim that smooth anim curve that smooth zoom curve that i messed around with we just loaded that into here so that the lock knows what it's locking to so let's hit f7 okay so here's our anim here's our zoom curve and here's our camera path so if i solve right now we should see the camera path change a little bit at the beginning and end so go Oh. Ah, okay. So I did a test of this earlier and the path stayed there. And now, uh. Okay, so I can't really undo redo right now, but I can assure you the, the path. Oh, see here. Oh, wait. What's going on? Oh, I don't have constraint on. I got to turn constraint on. Go. Here we go. Sorry. Constraint on. Constrain so it listens to your to your your field of view and it listens to your constraints if you have any. Sorry. Oh my god. I don't want to re-record that. I've recorded this way too many times. So you could see, um, yeah, the paths are moving a little bit. That's expected. But the curvatures up here are kind of changing at the beginning and end. It's so subtle. Again, this is something you're going to have to experience for yourself. But yeah, since we cleaned up the zoom curve, we have fixed the camera path slightly. <laughs> okay, and yeah, now if you want to, you can come into filtering control, do X, Y, Z for your path. And I'm going to turn the frequency really high to like 15 just so I get rid of any micro jitters that might be there. So apply. So it's very, very subtle. There's basically nothing there, but it's something. I'm going to reset that now. And now let's turn on position lock, get that path loaded in. And now we have a locked path and a locked smooth, uh, smoother zoom curve and go. So things should have moved a little bit. Yes. So some of our trackers have updated. 
So what we should be left with is a very clean animating path. And again, we can only watch things actually stick where they should if we apply in the lens workflow. So redistorted, okay. And now let's give it a final walk. Actually, you know what? Let's put in a, let's do a really fast orientation before we watch this, this beauty. So 3D, move, hole. Uh, let's see, what do I got? Where's the center? There we are. Okay, that's extremely rough and sloppy, but hey, what? Let's do this here. Sure, why not? Okay, very sloppy. Let's get a matrix. All right. Yes, look at that. Nice, clean. Everything's clean. What's the error? I, I probably introduced error instead. Oh, it's one. It's one. That's not too bad. I, I introduced... Uh, it was 0.8. Now it's one. That's not too bad. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, that's about it. I really hope this made sense because I spent so many times trying to figure out how to describe this, how to even show it. I don't know if it looked like, oh, yeah, it's makes sense what he showed and... I don't know. You know, I don't know. What, what am I even saying? I'm tired. It's it's 10 in the morning, and I'm tired. So yeah, hopefully this helped. Um, but to under uh, sorry to export this, you want to export. Um, you can export your camera normally as you usually would. Just file whatever file format you want. The plate you can you could uh, come over to summary save sequence three dots, find out where you want to save it, give it the proper name and then start. And then you can work with this plate. You'll be fine. It's just, it's the same as any other shot without animated distortion. But the compositing artists need ST maps that animate with this. So you would come up to shot and instead of writing distortion maps, which you would do for your one frame, uh, for your one distortion, you would do write undistortion sequence and then uh i guess i don't know let's call this uh lens you know i didn't think about what i was going to call it. i'm just going to go just whatever for now you can call it your shot name and what dot one two what's the first frame 1001.exr and once you have that, I assume this will work. Please work. Don't make me look stupid. So now that I've done that, you could see that we have lens UD 1001 all the way to whatever. And I think we also have to write out, by the looks of it, write redistortion sequence. So let's go back there. And I'm actually just going to go EXR and I'm going to select the first frame and let's call this, I don't know, I should have named this better. Let's go redist, redist, you know what, let's just go the full way, redistort, lens distortion, redistort. I should have made the first one undistort and then called this one redistort, but whatever. So we stole in the name, added redistort, and it's going to have the same thing there. Awesome. Now that I've done that, we have redistort and undistort. Okay, uh, so that's all I have. And thank you for watching. This is one of the sloppier tutorials. I am sorry, but I give up. I can't do much more. All right, I'm going to go figure out what I got to do with the rest of my day now. Later.